Okay, so again, <laughs> stop looking at me like that. I had to. That's how I had to do. What's up, everybody? Let me hit the record. Recording in progress. Everybody mute your mics. How's everybody doing? Okay. Now y'all are doing no doing no game banking in here. Okay. How's everybody doing out there? Cool? Alright. Today is May 8th. Sunday, May 8th, uh, 2022. Today we are talking about does being a preacher's kid equate to a life behind bars? Different bars. So, does being a preacher's kid equate to a life behind different bars? It's May 8th, 2022. Today's show intentions are helping so-called, what? So-called PKs. Why did Jason add so-called PKs? Helping so-called PKs find mental clarity, peace, and security, which is the same things their public speaking parents are searching for, right? So I'll say that again. The show intention is helping so-called PKs find mental clarity, peace, and security, which is the same thing that their public speaking parents are searching for. All right, we got to start off with definitions. All right, the definition of preacher's kid is a term to refer to a child of a preacher, pastor, deacon, lay leader, priest, minister, or other similar church leader. Although this phrase can be used in a purely descriptive way, it may also be used as a stereotype, thinking all PKs are the same. And this is not true. This is not true. So you said a life behind bars, Jason. Well, bars that I'm talking about in hip hop slang, uh, bars refers to a rapper's lyrics, especially when the lyrics is considered extremely clever, right? So, this is one form of bars that many so-called PKs may live behind. Many of them are well-spoken because some of them were raised around flowing clever words or flowing clever bars. I compare this to a form of uh, behind the bars as experiencing like a political boot camp and learning on the job. So again, being a PK, and again, it's different forms of PKs, and we're going to break that down. But it's like experiencing a political boot camp and learning on the job. All right. Now, if the ministry is large then the so-called PK could have chances of more of a holistic life experiences, but not limited to, but holistic life experiences of righteous people, gangsters, politicians, scientists, drug addicts, so-called winners, or so-called losers. Because in church, you come as you are, right? So again, if the ministry is large enough, then a so-called PK could have chances of more of a holistic life experiences of, but not limited to, so experiences of righteous people, experiences of gangsters, because gangsters go to church, experiences of politicians, politicians go to church, experiences of scientists, scientists go to church, drug addicts go to, go to church, so-called winners, so-called losers come as they are. So being a PK of a major ministry is like being a child of a major celebrity. These are even so-called PKs from, uh, this even happens to even uh, so-called PKs from small ministries. A lot of them still feel Hollywood. Four or five members is in their church and they still like. Five thousand members. So again, five members in your church, 
PKs can deal with Hollywood are 5,000 members in your church. PKs, so-called so -called PKs can deal with Hollywood energies. Hollywood en energies are not a respect of persons, right? And Hollywood energies will visit PKs, or so-called PKs of parents with real ministries. Hollywood energies will visit so-called PKs of parents with small ministries. Hollywood energies will visit PKs of parents with mid-size and large-size ministries. And Hollywood energies will visit PKs of parents with so-called fake ministries. Yes, fake ministries. We're going to cover those. So, many of the so-called strongest uh, PKs run from their callings because they know how bad the test can be from watching their trials and tribulations of their parents or other family members that did it. So we need to change the abbreviation of PK, of preacher's kid, to PCs, ACs, PCs, MCs, ICs, PCs, RCs, SCs, CCs, TCs, SCs, LCs, TCs, TCs. I said TCs twice, yep. PCs and LCs. So did you catch the repeats? Now let me say them in, in longer form. Preacher's kids, apostles' kids, prophets' kids, ministers' kids, imams' kids, presidents' kids, rabbis' kids, speakers' kids, counselors' kids, teachers' kids, scientists' kids, lawyers' kids, therapists' kids, CEOs' kids, politicians' kids, or the leaders' kids. Don't just say PKs go through it. The kid, so-called kids of these leaders go through it too. But should we call them kids? Let me rephrase that. Preachers' children, apostles' children, prophets' children, ministers' children, imams' children, presidents' children, rabbis' children, speakers' children, counselors' children, teachers' children, scientists' children, lawyers' children, Therapist children, CEOs children, politicians children, the leaders children versus PKs. Got it? Or if you don't have children, you have one that's a child. It's your preacher's child or a therapist child. See where I'm going with that? Because many preachers, so-called preacher's kids, are rebellious because words have power. And calling them preacher's kids is like saying preacher's babies. Preachers, baby goats. <laughs> Let's focus on changing the name to PCs. Shout out to the computer industries too. So the definition of kid is a young goat. PK, preachers, young goats. And shout out to all my people from New York, but this is not the context of preachers greatest of all time. So you know how people from New York... Oh, yo, you know what I'm saying? The goat is the greatest of all time. We ain't talking about that goat. We talk about goats, hard-headed, little rebellious goats. So when you say P PKs, that's what you're saying. Preachers, young goats. So, how many preachers have or are preaching sermons about the ups and downs of so-called PKs? Jason, did you just ask how many preachers are preaching about preaching sermons about PKs? Yeah, I said that. Or are they really just focused on community style topics only? Right? Let's leave the home stuff for the home, right? Well, let's just say other so-called PKs could benefit from a good message made from a custom speaker who lives it. So here's the supreme question of why that probably isn't happening. How's the preachers, the ministers, the teachers, the therapists, the CEOs, the leaders' relationships with their own biological parents? Everybody always talks about PKs. Well, let's talk about the PKs. I mean, the, 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 the PPs. <laughs> the preacher's parent. Right? So... How was the relationship with the preachers, the ministers, the teachers, relationship with their own biological parents? How well did they communicate with each other? So let's say they had a communication block. Let's just say hypothetically 
a child didn't get along with his parent and they had a communication block. Well, guess what? If you don't know the block and if you don't overcome the block, then it will try the relationship. It, it will try the relationship of the so-called PK and the preacher with the past with a past victory. Hold up the trophy with a past victory between the preacher and the preacher's parent, which is your grandparent. Which, again, is a funny way of saying generational curses. So there's a lot of so-called PKs from different religions who were raised on very deep concepts about God, spirituality, life, and many other things. And the bad news is that they can't relay that info to any or some of their peers. And this is... This is definitely extensive research on seeing what they go through. So again, PKs are raised, so-called PKs are raised around deep, deep knowledge. You put deep, deep knowledge into their mind. <laughs> and then they're going to hang out with their peers. What are they going to talk about <laughs> with their peers? So you're already going to stretch their mind out. The bad news about that is they want to, some of them want to hang with older people. Cause again, you want to hang to, you want to hang at a level where your mind is at. So we'll get into that topic later. So if they shared a lot of what they knew, they would be considered crazy. So this influences now, again, this is just according to the research I've done on PKs, so-called PKs. This influences some of them. To start displaying people pleasing actions. Which is a form of wrong servant leadership. Just to fit in with the so called normal at that time. Because normal changes right. Everything that is normal changes. And the future laughs at that and say oh that's how y'all dress. That was normal at that time. So many so called PKs they um. Experienced a lot of people pleasing actions from wrong servant leadership. That means you are healing the wrong people. I'm doing good. Yes, you're doing good the wrong way. You're doing wrong right. <laughs> Just to fit in in the so-called normal. Because I promise you, normal has changed up on all of us. So, many so-called PKs feel like they're always being watched. And people are judging them. Many so-called PKs feel like they're famous. Watch this. Without the money. Famous without the money. <laughs> you are unrealistically scrutinized. Many of them feel like they can't do anything wrong under the sun. Because you're disgracing your entire family. If you ever get caught doing anything wrong. Or making a mistake. Now. Rebellious energies. Fight so-called uh, PKs hard because they grew up around so many so-called righteous influences that a bad world seems so interesting for research purposes. That is, I know so-called PKs, you're just being bad for research purposes. I ain't gonna lie, I had one that was like, man, I'm throwing this, I'm throwing this party at this club because I'm trying to bring them out the club, and I was like. Uh, you sound like a PK that's trying to make sense of... Because, again, you raise around bars. You're raised around ducking and die, dodging um, words and accusations. You're around... Come on, you tell me arguments don't happen in the church. You're around all type of arguments. Please. So, again, that was a normal PK response. But remember, PKs are... They go into different religions, but again, is PKs the foundational point? What do you mean foundational point? Well, many so-called PKs are told what they are from so many different people. I got a word for you, young brother. I got a word for you, young sister. Are you you get P so-called PKs get a lot of that? Words, 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 words. But many of them don't know who they are meant to be for certain periods of time. And I'm actually going to share this with some of my uh, uh, Muslim friends, but I wanted to put this on video for them to see it first. And then we're gonna, I want to talk about it with them. 
But this even carries over into the Islamic uh, state. Now, check this out. In the book of In the Name of Allah, volume one, on page 37, sentence line seven, covering different reasons of what made the most honorable Elijah Muhammad such a reformer of people, it reads, and I quote, Every morning, Elijah sought work in front of the gates. Now, this is during the Great Depression, and this is talking about his life. Every morning, Elijah sought work in front of the gates of the manufacturing plants, only to wait for hours before being sent home empty-handed to a hungry family. In an attempt to drown his woes, Elijah turned to drinking. Now remember, I'm studying the different reasons of what made the most honorable Elijah Muhammad such a great reformer of people. Oh, if you're going through something, you can bring people out of it if you get out of it. Okay, so things came became so bad that Clara, that's his wife, Clara would have to search for Elijah to bring him home. One day she discovered him passed out on the railroad track. In the midst of the, this great disillusionment, Elijah was at a crossroads of his destiny. He would soon discover that hope was on his way, on the way. End quote. Now, supreme question. If Elijah Muhammad would not have been so-called a preacher's kid, would he have successfully made it during the Great Depression? Jason, what are you talking about? Well, again, in the same book, In the Name of Allah, volume one on page 40, sentence line 23, it reads, and I quote, being quite astute in scripture, Elijah noticed that Fard, words and actions tallied with the Bible's prophetic versions, I mean, verses he studied as a child. Hold on, let me say that again. Being quite astute in scripture, Elijah noticed that Fard's words and actions tallied with the Bible's prophetic verses he studied as a child. Stored in Elijah's memory were all the Sunday sermons from his father that spoke to past and future prophecies. So, um, period, because I was getting hyped. In Elijah's mind, Fard fit perfectly, or perfectly fit the bill about what the coming one would say and do on his arrival. This is the one expected by the prophet. Elijah thought while in the audience, end quote. So when Elijah Muhammad first met Master Farah Muhammad, he was sitting in the audience and he being quite astute in scripture because of the Sunday sermons from his father that spoke to past and future prophecies in Elijah's mind, which is everything for pit master for Muhammad fit perfectly um, about the what the coming one would say. Now, this is looking from a hindsight. Now, they did a work and they created a work. And if you study how they did it, it showed, they told you how they did it. So, again, if Elijah Muhammad would not have been a so-called preacher's kid foundation, could he have successfully made it out of the Great Depression when everybody was giving up hope? So, one more time with the book of... Um, um, and again, the first time I uh, learned about this book, it was Method Man that told me about this, that, that I learned about this book. But in the same book, in the book of In the Name of Allah, volume one, page 42, sentence line one, there's a there's a small italicized paragraph, but it's the paragraph under it with the normal words. So sentence line one there. Here we go. Quote. Recognizing the serious nature of Fard's claim, Elijah seemed to take it all in stride, like as if he somehow was prepared in advance to receive this revelation. So I underlined prepared in advance. I was like, prepared in advance. Hmm. Because again, he was a Garbyite. He was in the uh, more science, no matter how many schools of thought he visited or visited him. No one can argue he was a so-called PK. Because that's the topic I'm going on. 
He was a so-called PK. So watch this. Many so-called PKs grow up with a lot of physical and spiritual pressures, such as jealousy and envy by other siblings. <clears throat> Even Elijah Muhammad's own brother turned on him. And he wrote about it. Because again, I'm not making none of this up. He wrote about it. In the book of Message to the Black Man on page 257, sentence line 35, and I start to quote, and again, this is his words, May Allah pour upon the hypocrites the chastisement that he poured upon my mother's son, my own brother, who rose up against me in 1935 and joined himself with those who were bent upon taking life away. This was for no cause other than jealousy and envy of my mission. May Allah strike them with terror and grief that they may not have rest day or night, for they return to me evil for good. I have been better to them than they were to themselves. End quote. I was like, so, I, so when I wrote that, read that, and then I was like, okay, I always, also knew that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad had some issues with his son, uh, Warith Dean Muhammad. Respectfully, I make my point that this energy, respectfully, to make my point, is that this energy does not have a religion. So, growing up with a lot of physical and spiritual pressures, many so-called PKs feel like they have to live up to the expectations of their powerful parents. Or mid-powerful parents or small powerful parents and their powerful parents communities many but not all so y'all heard that disclaimer but not all because somebody might hear that and be like no me you, you're in the disclaimer but not all many but not all so-called pks are interested in the negative life when they're younger many powerful so-called pks that eventually get into the ministry Whatever ministry they're they are they're tied to, they may want to experience or or must experience. Now y'all gotta really feel me out on this. Many so-called or many powerful so-called PKs that eventually get into ministry, they either want to experience or they must experience bad sections of life. For their future teaching lessons. So again, either they want to experience or you want some Jonah and Joseph stuff you must experience for their future teaching lessons in whatever religion. Because again, a PK is nothing more than a minister's kid. Uh, like I said, a speaker's kid, a leader's kid. But we don't say kid no more, we say child or children. And I'm going to get to that. So-called uh, PKs can't fully play with other children. I said fully play with other children. Many people feel sorry for Michael Jackson's upbringing. And to a certain extent, you should. But you should really feel sorry for so-called PKs of different religions. So do you think the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's son, Joel Osteen's son, T.D. Jake's son, I'm going to make the hook different leaps so i'm gonna say this again do you think the most most honorable elijah muhammad's son joel Osteen's son td jake's son grew up with more pressures than michael jackson from joe jackson's current fame <laughs> if the pressure that he put on them made him famous to a certain extent that they had to deal with levels of famous pressures but again just like powerful children of other cultures do so Michael Jackson probably had to work, but they worked under Joe Jackson's current fame. I said uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's fame, Joel Osteen's fame, T.D. Jake's fame. I don't care who it is. Barack Obama, I don't care who it is. I don't care what religion. A PK, so-called PK, has to live and grow under the pressures of your parent, your powerful parent. So some PKs, so-called PKs, dumb down their gifts and reaching higher success makes them underperform. And you're like, 
You're a PK out. It's hard for your friends to do bad stuff around them. So again, this is from my research. They say a lot of, a lot of my friends don't do bad stuff around me or around me or with me. You don't get invited to things because the Lord is in your life. <laughs> I would have you come to the strip club, but the Lord is in your life. So I'm not going to call you for that. This treatment makes the so-called PK want to explore and be curious about bad things during their much ignorant days and times. So again, this is during their ignorant days and times. And when or if, so again, and when or if, when or if they get caught. Uh-oh, a PK got caught, so-called PK got caught. People go crazy because they should have known better because they are so-called PK. So they don't even win there. <laughs> so I used to shake my head when I see so-called PKs trying to be something outside of themselves, especially if I knew that they weren't really about that life, nor equipped for the life that they were currently ignorant and curious about. Ignorant and curious about. They weren't equipped and they were uh, about the life that they were currently, not always, but they were currently ignorant and curious about. Now, according to uh, the Bible in John 15, 19, John 15, 19, it states, if ye are of the world, the world would love you. No, let me really say it how it is. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. We can talk about who that's for, but just trust me, just trust me. We're gonna go deeper into that in uh, later builds. But every so-called uh, PK is waiting. Now check this out, now this is deep. Now remember, you so-and-so's son, you so-and-so's daughter, that's all I hear PK's telling me during this research. So this is all people are saying. You are your, you are your parent. You are your parent, son. You are your parent. You are your parent, starter. You are your parent. Remember your parent and, and your parents. And then you, and then you. So Every, not one, not two, not three, every so-called PK, and I can generalize on this one, and I don't get a chance to generalize. I can generalize on this. Every so-called PK is waiting for that one life realization that gives them the comfort in their own skin, under their own identity, even if it doesn't magically please everyone. Now, remember, that's hard for them. But I'm going to say this again. Every so-called PK is waiting for that one life realization that gives them the comfort ooh, I feel, in their own skin, whew, under their own identity. This is who I am. Even, uh-oh, even if it doesn't magically please everybody, everyone. So, Many so-called PKs don't feel free until they can feel and know for themselves. But this can be a good and bad thing. Because that's some, I want to touch the stove and see if it's hot stuff too. It can be that too. So, if you raise a so-called PK right, they will respect, reward, or punish your parenting style. Watch this. In hindsight. Many so-called PKs like to learn in hindsight. Watch this. <laughs> when foresight is the prophecy energy that their parents want to preach about. I'll say that again. Many so-called PKs like to learn in hindsight when the foresight is the prophecy energies their parents want to preach and teach about. So when you see a boxer walking into a fight, you can actually see the training on that boxer's body. Jason, why did you say when you see a boxer walking into a fight, you can actually see the training on that boxer's body? Because 
talking to preachers, teachers, no more anger training for so-called preacher's kids. According to Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child, not a kid. It said train up a child. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So again, don't train up no kids. Train up your child. Ephesians 6, 4, anger training. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in discipline and instruction of the Lord. Hmm, this sounds like consistent teaching and training here. But this doesn't sound like anger training because it said fathers do not provoke your children to anger. Honor your father. So that's one of those scriptures where you can honor that father and mother. Fathers don't provoke your children to anger. Honor that father and mother. Don't. If you get caught in that, that's your fault. Because one way to easily beat that is the father is supposed to be the, uh, the adult. So if you're provoking your children to anger as an adult. Moving on. Proverbs 20, um, 11. Even a child makes himself known by his words. Nope. Even a child makes himself known by his actions. By whether his contact... Conduct is pure and upright. Last but not least, James 1, 22. Be, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Yeah, that sounded really good. Be doers, but be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourselves. Man, I'm deceiving everybody. Deceiving yourselves. Many so-called PKs. <laughs> think about it just ask any of them many so-called pks will tell you that they have met many so-called weird people at their religious locations even when they're out running errands many so-called weird people like to visit churches just like so-called normal people like to do right so my synagogues whatever so-called weird people like to visit these places so the so-called pks the, the, the good ones, they sit back and they watch and they believe everything that they see with the progressive knowledge. So, again, I'm looking at you and I'm progressing my knowledge of what I'm seeing on you. Since so-called PKs grow up in ministries, experiencing and, 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 and observing. So, I got, so I'm going to say this slow. Since many so-called PKs, these are bars, grow up in ministries experiencing, observing, watch this, and profiling persons and communities. Now remember, I'm talking about larger ministries because again, this is not the five people ministries. <laughs> this is, if I'm saying communities, this would definitely be a larger community. But again, a so-called PK, if you are born as a PK of a larger ministry, that's a blessing. That's like the most, and again, there's generational curses or energies. Our energy is never uh, destroyed. It's only transferred. So however you, however you want to state that, it's big time with them. But we're going, we're going to go into that. But at the end of the day, you get to profile people in communities. You're around a lot of information. So-called PKs. <laughs> So-called PKs dating and marrying other so-called PKs is crazy power and should be against the law. I'm just playing. But I'm going to definitely talk about this in a future topic. So again, PK, so-called PKs dating other so-called PKs. It's a, lot, it's a lot of info in that. But from an energy standpoint, so-called PKs feel the same pressures. Watch this. So-called PKs feel the same pressures that their parents feel. Watch this sandwich. On top of their ancestors that failed or passed generational curse, generational curses test, or past energies according to science that never are destroyed but transferred. On top of their own issues. What programs are there for so-called PKs? 
I had one solution. It was called the Impact Phase Program tip. I help leaders, young adults, teens, and even youth of leaders, our young leaders. Um, I feel, really feel like that program was ahead of its time because my biggest problems were adults who were in mentoring competition with me. I don't know if you ever heard of mentoring competition to where I'm, I want to stop you from mentoring people that I can never mentor. I don't even know how you do that, but, um, cause you're assigned people to mentor. You can't, it's the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. Um, but many parents assume that their children will see it their way, even though that they didn't see it their parents way. So instead of strategically partnering with the people, places, and things that have or will influence their child or children, do preachers train harder than their children? Do teachers train harder than their children? I hope not because the Bible talks about training in Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart. So train up, never train down. Train with, but never train someone against your own child. I'll say those parts slower. Train up. Because again, sometimes you got to quote Bible, verse to, Bible verses to get black people to listen to you. Don't drink bleach. What are you talking about? Uh, okay, it says in the Bible that thou should... Instead of just listening to, to me not drinking bleach. But train up a child. So the Bible says train up a child. So train up. Never train down. Train with. Because I want to work out too. So train with your child, but never train someone or people against your own child. And guess what the best training um, equipment to use is? It's the best equipment to train up your child. It's knowledge. So in my conclusion, the oldest war is ignorance versus knowledge. Jason, why didn't you put knowledge first, saying knowledge versus ignorance? Because true knowledge doesn't have to ever focus or fight falsehood ever. True knowledge doesn't have to focus, mean look at. Fight, mean actually look at and interact with. <laughs> falsehood, ever. It just is. True knowledge is just is. It's just here, unbothered by anything. If you ever think truth is unbothered, unbothered by anything, what is bothering truth? Ignorance is the one doing all the work. Ignorance has to look, focus, and try to fight true knowledge so it knows what to lie about. Ignorance is lacking knowledge. So ignorance is the only thing that has to focus on knowledge to try to fight it so it even knows what to lie about so if you're focusing on being like other people instead of being like knowledge then you could be opening yourself up to lies and more lies so last but not least so-called pks they need to dedicate themselves to a life behind solution bars of knowledge built on truths solution bars those are interactions between people that can actually help you if you feel like you're not getting help. So solution bars of knowledge built on truths that work best for you and your current and your future outcomes. Sometimes your outcomes are going to be about you. Sometimes your outcomes are going to be about your team. So you need to understand individual winning and team winning. Right now we're in a day and age where it's individual winning. Man, look what I got. Look what I... When I used to play sports, we, 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 we. Now it's I, 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 I. Dedicate yourself to group success and individual success. I'm going to close it here. Thank you for joining me for another Sunday Bars. Look forward to another, an another uh, Sunday Bars next week. Um, we are breaking down the other topic. We got to narrow it down to three.
All right, so I'm going to stop the recording. Peace and love. If it stops. Recording stopped. All right, peace and love.